All right. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for attending the CXL Consortium's Compliance Program Overview Integrators List and Feature Testing Webinar. Um, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, so please submit your questions via the chat feature and they will be addressed. Um, at this time, I will go ahead and turn the presentation over to Michael Hall and Nathan White, our Compliance Working Group Co-Chairs. All right. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're uh, joining us from. I'm Michael Hall. I'm co-chair of the Compliance Work Group uh, for the CXL Consortium. And uh, Nathan uh, White is also here, and he's going to also uh, speak in a little bit. And he is also the co-chair of the Compliance Work Group. So as we are heading towards our next compliance workshop, which will be held in uh, Portland, Oregon next month, we thought it would be a great opportunity to give you a look at the current state of the compliance program, provide some updates on what to expect regarding testing for 2 auto devices, as well as answering any questions you may have um, as we get through it. So let's jump right in and uh, get started. Generally speaking, um, specifications like the Compute Express Link standard are developed to allow products from all around the industry to successfully integrate and interoperate together in order to provide an end solution which will work seamlessly regardless of who developed the individual components. The authors of the specifications work hard to make sure that things are thought through and documented uh, so that developers understand the ways in which a device should interact with other devices connected through whichever medium is defined in that specification. In our case with uh, CXL, we have documented the compliance requirements within the base specification. They are located in chapter 14 of the base spec. We did this so that developers can understand the compliance requirements as they develop their products. There are some requirements that we ask that the devices support so that we can better evaluate the cards quickly within a workshop environment, such as algorithms that the devices can produce when asked, so that developers need to be aware of those requirements during the initial design phase of their programs. By having this information available in the base spec, we believe that it allows us to better define a specification that will encourage interoperability of these separate devices in a seamless fashion. Ultimately, that is the goal of any specification interoperability throughout the industry. In a compliance program, or more specifically, a compliance workshop, uh, we are somewhat time limited as well as capacity limited and capability limited. So not every aspect of the specification will, can be evaluated during the workshop itself. With that in mind, the compliance program for CXL has a heavy focus on key portions of the specification, which impact interoperability on the different devices. It is important that we highlight the compliance program is not a replacement for detailed validation of a device. There are some portions of the specification, which after discussed in the work group, we limit our testing on because of the time and capability limitations that I mentioned previously. As an example for a switch device, maybe we may have C48 or even 96 lanes. We will evaluate a single connection. We will not be testing all 96 lanes of that device. In our opinion, that type of testing uh, should be left to the validation teams who are developing the product. Additionally, there may be aspects of the device architecture which would limit our ability to force the device to behave in specific ways necessary to test a particular feature. And if we were to prescribe perhaps how a device is architected so that we could test each of those devices in the same way, that would likely limit the amazing ingenuity and in the developers out there in the world have. So we definitely want to encourage ingenuity. Therefore, there's a strong desire by the work group to focus only on the areas of interoperability uh, as much as possible without making the compliance requirements any more burdensome than necessary. The overall goal is to make sure our end users experience as smooth and seamless as possible um, product uh, development area. So in a compliance workshop, there will be three primary testing areas that we're focused on. Electrical compliance, which is the signal quality type of uh, investigation directed tests by equipment vendors using things like logic analyzers and exercisers, and then the use of compatibility validation software or the CV app, as we refer to it. As I'm sure you're aware, the CXL specification uh, electrical requirements are based on the PCI SIGS PCIe specification. We take advantage of alternate protocol negotiation 
a feature defined starting in the PCI Gen 5 specification. As such, we directly take the PCI SIG's electrical testing requirements for our defined electrical tests. Therefore, a device that supports both PCI and CXL standard would be able to uh, get qualifying test results at a PCI workshop for the electrical portion of the testing. Functional tests are defined in chapter 14 of the base spec. These tests are divided into uh, the two remaining categories, equipment vendor directed tests and the CV app test. The directed tests are mostly noted in the compliance chapter, um, having the test listed as uh, requiring an exerciser or an analyzer or something like that. However, there are maybe some tests we intend for the CV app, but upon implementation, we find that they are better suited for the directed test structure. Those tests will be noted by the compliance work group and then available uh, in the test vendor software. These types of changes would be developed and acknowledged you know, during the early stages of the program. So as we talk about stages, as you can see on the slide, we have uh, three main phases of testing, the pre-FYI phase, the FYI phase, and the general testing phase. Pre-FYI is a phase in which we are still evaluating our test software, our test implementations, and our consistency of test execution. This phase is covered in an ad hoc testing, perhaps um, at individual companies or testing noted as pre-FYI in, in a workshop. At this stage, tests themselves will change, will gather uh, feedback and continue to make improvements on them, releasing new versions of the test software as they are modified so developers can try them out in their labs and provide additional feedback. The FYI phase is the next phase in our program evolution. This is in initiated by uh, a formal release of the CV app, the directed tests being available from the test equipment vendors and a release of the electrical test criteria from the PCI SIG. The tests themselves are locked at this point, and if we find uh, any challenges with the test during the FYI phase, we would either remove the tests or return back to the pre-FYI stage for additional development work. The key point is additional tests cannot be added during the FYI stage, but they can be removed. By removing, uh, we mean we could they could go away completely or possibly be available as a permanent FYI test throughout the life of the program. If this was the case, we would use that sort of data for informational purposes in our test development for future spec releases, but it would never be used as a criteria for being included in the, the integrators list. We exit the FYI phase after we've collected FYI testing data at a minimum of at least one workshop, usually more. And the work group has a chance to evaluate the uh, genericized results and vote that we are ready to exit the FYI phase of the program. From there, we enter general testing. Devices that successfully pass the testing done at this stage have the option to be included in the integrators list published on the CXL Consortium website. Some companies may wish uh, not to be included in the website right away, but they would have passing results uh, they could share with their customers or prospective customers and may choose to be added to the integrators list at a later date. So as I move over to the next slide, if we jump to the current status of the program and we, uh, we reference the phases we talked about on the previous slide, we are currently in the general testing phase for 1.1 devices. This means those devices are eligible for publishing on the integrators list uh, after successfully passing and testing at the workshop. There are several devices listed there currently, and we anticipate that list growing after our next workshop. For 2.0 devices, we are currently at the FYI stage for portions of the 2.0 specification. Nathan will talk in a moment uh, about the different aspects of 2.0 testing and how we've broken those test requirements up into different aspects based on the technology. But for 2.0 devices currently, um, our next workshop coming up in October will be FYI testing. And we anticipate being able to move forward to general testing in early 2024, assuming, that, of course, that the data in the October workshop supports the conclusion of the FYI stage. And the final note there is just uh, as that CXL 3.0 tests are currently in development, we are hoping to start the pre-FYI testing in the near future, but we don't have that scheduled in our plans at this point yet. So with that, I will hand it over to Nate to go through the changes for 2.0 testing. Alrighty, so we are currently 
Oh, did we move slides here? All right, so we are currently in um, FYI, or about to enter the FYI testing for 2.0. Um, and this is a, a list of the changes that are taking place um, between 2.0 and 3.0. So with, with CXL 2.0, we added this compliance mode DOE. The DOE is a data object exchange. It's a mailbox exchange um, to pass information back and forth uh, between the host and the device. And we built an API around that to control uh, compliance uh, features on the device that help us enable the testing. These are things like the initiation of the test algorithms that are defined in the CXL specification, as well as error injection uh, uh, capabilities, um, basically things that we need to do to trigger uh, device states in order to actually test for compliance. Um, in 2.0, this was added as an optional feature um, with the DevSec being the, still being the required uh, interface for these features. When we move to CXL 3.0, um, the DOE is no longer optional, it's required, and the DevSec interface has been removed uh, altogether. So we have added additional error injection capabilities in the CXL uh, 3.0 DOE. And a lot of the ECNs <coughs> uh, that were added to CXL 2.0 have become mainline. So um, uh, so the, the test criteria for those are cleaned up quite a bit as we go into CXL 3.0. Um, and the, uh, in general with the 6L 3.0 release, we did a lot of test cleanup. Uh, we have test topologies, um, since we have to accommodate, uh, testing on switches and, and, uh, in the future on fabrics, uh, we have better test prerequisites and pass fail criteria defined in the, in the newer version of the specification. So one of the major things that we've done with CXL compliance testing is we've recognized the fact that test features are being implemented asynchronously from the major CXL revisions. What I mean by that is that, for example, in CXL2, we have uh, we have the, the CXL type three devices, which um, are used for CXL mem. And then we have features that have been, uh, that are also implemented in 2.0, like the CXL security. Um, the CXL mem portions of the spec are mature and will be targeted for testing, but uh, the industry is not mature around the security side of the CXL 2.0 specifications. So what we're doing is we're breaking off the compliance to target specific, um, uh, groups of tests around these test features. So what this looks like on the integrators list is that you'll have subsections of tests uh, that represent uh, each of these uh, tests, each of these uh, features um, of, of the device. Uh, for example, a CXL 1.1, the only uh, test group that we offer is a CXL 1.1 core. For CXL2, we have a CXL2 core as well as CXL2 mem. And then <clears throat> when we get to, um, when the industry is ready for uh, security testing, we will have, uh, we'll have another phase of FYI testing that will help us um, develop and, and uh, mature the test for CXL security. And that'll be another feature that'll be added for CXL 2.0. Uh, compliance testing, as well as what will be pushed forward into 6L3 on 6L3 and uh, beyond. All right. Um, that's all I have. So I think we're ready for Q&A. Okay, great. Um, so the first question we received is that are the compliance algorithms required for memory only 6L type 3 devices which would normally not have any issue, or sorry, any reason to issue upstream request TLPs? No, the algorithms are not required for CXL type three devices. Uh, we did recognize that there is no reason why a type three device would have to initiate traffic from its side. So we've scrubbed all the tests that were originally specified uh, to use the test algorithms, and we have a different way to do 
memory error injection tests that was introduced via an ECN uh, for those. So no, uh, a type three device does not have to implement the algorithms. Nate, was that ECN against 1.1 or 2.0? 2.0. Yeah, so that it's it wouldn't be listed in anything around the 1.1 spec. So this is all 2.0 beyond. Correct. Okay. Uh, the next question is: When is the next compliance test event, and how can a company participate in a test event? So the next test event is the first week of October. It's going to be in Portland, Oregon. Um, uh, it's scheduled. Uh, any member company uh, of CXL can. Uh, it, it should have been notified about the workshop through our normal communication processes, uh, and that would they would be able to then uh, sign up for the workshop. If you haven't, please reach out to the CXL admin and they would be able to um, make sure you get a, a, an invite and then you can sign up and register your particular devices. The reason we have the registration process is just so we can coordinate which tests would have to be uh, happening uh, on each device and then how we uh, coordinate across all the different devices there and making sure we have them um, in a timely manner. Okay, great. Um, as of right now, that is all the questions that we've received. Um, so thank you everyone for attending and submitting your questions. Um, please feel free to reach out to us if you do have any additional questions. Um, the presentation recording will be made available on YouTube and Bright Talk. And then the slides will also be available on the CXL Consortium website. Um, thank you again. Thanks all. Hey, thanks.